All right, I thought it'd be only fair to make a video to kind of address some of the, the comments I have in one of my uh, very popular videos where I say the 38 Special is the best handgun cartridge. And I do give some ballistics numbers in those videos. And a lot of people come back saying, oh, you're just full of it. You're lying about it, whatever. And the thing is, I thought it'd be a nice, fair thing to come back and just present these some real-world numbers on the 9mm versus the 38 Special and that is because that's the comparison I often often bring it to is and that makes a lot of sense because those cartridges they're very similar in a lot of ways I'd say they're more similar than what they are different now my basis for this whole argument here though is basing it on a 38 plus P versus a 9mm standard pressure and before you say that's not fair the common observation I've made over the years is that 38 plus P is pretty much what's always available for self-defense. It's very rare to find a standard pressure 38 special that's for self-defense. On the other hand, I would say probably two-thirds to three-quarters of the defensive ammo for 9mm is standard pressure. So if any random guy goes into any random gun store and you say I want something defensive for 38 special and I want something defensive for 9mm, you know, what's going to be presented is standard pressure 9mm and 38 special plus P. And that makes absolute sense because the 9mm plus P is really one of those cartridges that are very, very highly pressured and it kind of goes above what you really want to be pushing because the standard pressure alone is like 35,000 PSI you know a, a 38 special plus P I think it maxes out at like only 22,000 so even in a plus P you're, you still don't have a whole lot of pressure now the, the whole caveat to that is that you would have um, much thinner brass than a 38 special you know it can't really stand those pressures very much as for the 9mm, it's just a, it's a sturdier brass in general, and you, it, it, you know, it was designed to handle those high pressures, and it does it very well. As where the 38 Special uses the same brass with the plus P versus the standard pressure, so you can't push it too much. But do keep in mind that Elmer Keith, when he, did, when he uh, invented the 357 Magnum, he was essentially creating the 357 Magnum in a 38 special case before the case was lengthened. So it does have the capability to go up there pretty high. So what I did here is I wrote down some numbers here. And before I get on to what's really, really uh, common, because I took a lot of samples, just random samples, and I didn't cherry pick any of these samples. I picked out what looks normal. You know, years and years of looking at this stuff, there are just average numbered cartridges as far as foot-pounds energy velocity that come out that, that are average. And, and I compared them in 4-inch barrels. A 4-inch barrel 357 Magnum or 38 Special Revolver versus a 4-inch barrel uh, Glock uh, 19. I figured that would be a pretty fair comparison. So I went through a lot of different places, a lot of different sources, which I'm not going to list because there were this kind of scattered sources, but they are all very consistent. And I, and I picked up some, some numbers that are all consistent, and, and I wrote them down here. And I'm also going to kind of share the extremes of those cartridges, what happens if you really push those cartridges. So basically, just picking some random numbers, what I got here in the 9mm, when you're talking a 115 grain bullet, you're talking 1150, 1175 feet per second, 1180 out of a 4 inch barrel. You know, up there, 350 foot-pounds of energy. And some of these other cartridges, you know, Winchester White Box or Silver Tip, both right around 1150 to 1160 feet per second. So 338 foot-pounds, 345 foot-pounds, 350 foot-pounds out of a Glock 19. And that's about the power you're getting. Now if you take a 4-inch barrel GP100, that's where I got this particular test, you're talking 110 grain plus P at 10. 1058, a 125 plus P at 989, a 158 semi wide cutter plus P at 921. What that equates down to is 272, 273, 298 foot pounds of energy. 
So your highest one on that 38 plus P is 298 foot pounds. The higher one up on the 9 millimeter standard is 350. Your average loss here is 63 feet per second. Now how significant that is, yeah, I guess that's up to you. But I do notice that the 38 Special and the 9mm kind of deliver their power in a little bit different ways. You know, 9mm is always lighter, and it's always a little faster. 38 Specials always uh, have, not always, but a lot of times a heavier bullet, moving a little bit slower. And that has some effect on hollow point expansion and penetration, depending on the bullet design. Now, I did kind of the same comparison here with a LC9. I believe that's a 3 inch barrel versus a 1.875 inch J frame. And these are pretty much in line with what I've seen over the years as being pretty average, pretty common. Um, 9mm and LC9, gold dot, 124 grain, 1,020 feet per second. 115 grain, Federal 9B, 1023, Ranger, 147 grain, 928. So your foot pounds energy. 267, 281, 287, average of 278 on those particular samples. So about 275 foot pounds of energy, and that's what I've noticed over the years. 38 plus P in the little J frame, sub 2 inch barrel, gold dot plus P, 897 feet per second, core bound 110, 961, core bound 125, 911, you know, 226. 230, 241 foot-pounds of energy. That sounds about right. 232 foot-pounds average versus the 9's 278. Difference of only 46 feet per second difference in these little micro guns. So considering that you're generally going to come out of a gun store with a plus P38 and generally going to come out with a standard pressure 9mm, you know, you're only talking less than 50 feet. 50 foot pounds difference in energy. I don't know if somebody's going to come up here and say, you know what, well, I, I use a 9mm plus P plus or something. And you know what, I took some numbers here from the people that really like to max these cartridges out, and that's Buffalo Boar. And I compared their, their top of line on both 9mm and 38 Special. And the 9mm is a 115 grain plus P plus. Out of Glock 19, it's doing 1,389 feet per second, or 493 foot-pounds of energy. That's a lot for a 9mm. Then that, that, the uh, 38 special of that is the 38 FBI load. And that's a 158 grain summer wad cutter plus P hollow point. And that's doing 1162 feet per second or 474 foot-pounds of energy. So 493 versus 474 you're only talking 19 foot-pounds difference. And that's when you're pushing them about as as high as those cartridges are going to go. So when you compare the 38 plus P to 9 millimeter, they are very similar. You do kind of see a consistency of anywhere between, um, you know, 20 to 60 foot pounds energy difference. With generally, it's 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 favoring the 9 millimeter. And a lot of people say, well, I get more shots with a 9 millimeter anyway. That's that's why I pick it. But you look at these foot pounds energy shot per shot, the 38 plus P really isn't that bad. I mean, on average, you're about 225 at a little snubby foot-pounds energy. And your little subcompact 9 millimeters, generally 275. 225 versus 275, that's what it really comes down to in your little carry guns. Now, on your 4-inch uh, duty size weapons, and you're talking, on average, 275, 280 with the 38 plus P versus maybe 340 on average, you know, uh, foot-pounds. So they are fairly close. They're close enough that I would say is one really have a lot more stopping power. That's kind of hard to say. I, I would say, uh, you know, the, the, the numbers do show a little bit more stopping power than one shot stop, but, you know, as, as a lot of people know, that, that those numbers are kind of, you can't trust those, those uh, numbers 100% because, a lot of them are law enforcement uh, data, and by the time these really good hollow points came out for the 38, the, the more you know, more common for plus P's and, and, and ballistic tip hollow points and whatnot to be carried in the 38. By that time, police departments are already switched on to auto loaders, so a lot of that data they're getting with 
this high amounts of stopping power are going to be law enforcement data because they keep track of that when an officer shoots somebody. They keep track of that data as where the data for the 38 Special from the law enforcement is very outdated because this is coming from a day when, when um, you know, the lead round nose was king. So it's hard to really put a, 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 a solid modern ammunition number on these two, but I would say all in all, they're pretty similar. Yes, you're going to get a little more, a little more energy on the nine millimeter. In general, if you just go to the gun store, I say I want defensive 38 and I want defensive nine mil. They're going to give you, you know, plus P38 standard nine, and they're going to be, you know, nine millimeters going to have a little bit more power, but not a lot. So that's just my rundown on it. And you know, you're always going to have that revolver versus auto. And most of the young guys get on here and say, oh, auto all day, got more rounds. But, you know, I'm still one of those guys that think, you know, your reliability of the revolver is, is still king. And I, put, I always think, you know, the average number of shots fired is three in a self-defense situation. So what's wrong, wrong with five in my gun, you know? So that's what I think, you know. And, and considering I'm not law enforcement, I'm not security, I'm not all that. You know, why do I need an auto? They're fine weapons, but I, I think the revolver and the 38 round really still has its place. So I thought I'd give a rundown of those numbers and what I think about it. So share your opinions. Uh, tell me what you think. Uh, just do it respectfully and, and like, share, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.